What's up, you guys? How are you all doing? I have returned for yet another prediction video and something else to go on to this video. But first of all, before I get to this, hey, guys, subscribe. And uh, I want to earn a lot of subscriptions and keep my monetization status. So if you're already subscribed, please double check because I've also been uh, dealing with uh, YouTube that's been kind of docking people from subscribing. Has been docking some of, some of our uh, subscriptions. I might be one of those people that are included. So hopefully that YouTube is doing something about it. But anyway, so just double check. Tell all your friends if you think I'm worth listening to. So, so just remember, subscribe. Let's get into this. I'm going to put up my banner here. I'm going to start out with the second thing I had, which is this. UH has done it all in the Big West. I'm going to get to the prediction for CSUN just a little later. But still, UH men's basketball has done it all. And when I say that, I'm talking about because, I, I, I mean, I should say, I'm talking about that they've swept every opponent with the win at Riverside. And that was the one thing that they'd yet to do in this conference. Because we joined the Big West in 2012. We showed some promise. And all the schools are located in, in uh California, Southern California, Northern, around well, mid -Cal Southern California, no Cal, nor Cal, I should say. But still, for UH to uh, sweep every opponent in this conference is what I would call a huge accomplishment, for sure. Because we won it all in 2016, and there were times where, uh, and although at first we were, we were pretty hot in the Big West tournament, making it to the semis or even making it to the finals a couple times until we wanted, and we won it all in 2016 when Roderick Bobbitt, Stefan Jankovic, and Stefan Jovanovic and Aaron Valdez were part of the roster, just to name a few of the stars that were there. Unfortunately, after that, all those guys that I'd mentioned had left. Bobbitt graduated. Jenks went pro in Europe. Valdez drafted for the NBA. Jovanovic transferred to LMU, Lo Loyola Marymount, along with someone off their bench, Nico Filipovich. And also Quincy Smith graduated, another guy I had left out. But still, to accomplish winning the Big West tournament and the season, we, we did a lot. And, uh, I got to tell you, I think we've accomplished more in this conference than we did when we were in the WAC for so many years, the Western Athletic Conference, because the WAC consisted of teams like Fresno State, Rice, L Louisiana Tech, and some other and uh, some other teams that uh, that certainly made for some good rivalries, and Nevada as well. Unfortunately, a lot of those teams had left, and then the WAC looked like it was disbanded. But it's revamped with whole new teams. And, of course, UH said adios for the uh, 2012 season. So, I got to tell you, we won the WAC tournament then. But the only thing we hadn't done was get a win in Reno against Nevada. 12 times we went there. 12 times we came away the losers. And I know I touched on this in a prior video, but the closest we got was in 2006. And uh, that was when a shot by PJ Owsley went through the netting before the clock hit zero, but the refs wouldn't honor it. And that was when I started thinking, why are there not any lawyers in basketball? And, uh, but still, but still it's college athletics. This sport can break your heart. Sometimes it can, you can also love the sport. You can also love these sports or anything like that. But still, I have to say that uh, UH has looked incredibly well, which leads me to think that I'm, which leads me to think that we're going to have another runaway game against the Sun. But it's not going to be easy. I'm going to get to that in a little bit. But still, am I saying that UH should leave the conference to move on to bigger and better things? Not under these circumstances. Okay, the Big West has a lot of opponents 
has, in fact, every opponent in the Big West, you cannot take lightly, especially some at, at the bottom of the stack, like Bakersfield and Cal Poly. And Cal Poly, they're 0-18 in conference, and they've yet to taste a win. They only got two chances left. So I hope that they can do that. But uh, <clears throat> I actually thought their win against Cal Poly was, was the most complete game I'd seen from them. And their win against UC Riverside, oh, that went down to the wire. And UH managed to find a way to come out on top. And they did so in overtime. Now, they were leading by six at halftime. And they ended up uh, coughing up the lead after building it to over ten. But still, for UH to win it in overtime, I'll take that any day of the week. Because Riverside, make no mistake, this team can really break your heart like they did last year at our place because we were leading by a good margin and then Kamaka Hepa got an offensive foul and that pretty much ruined UH for the rest of the time. And they ended up losing by a possession. This year, or this past, yeah, this year, at their place, we built a big lead, and although we lost it, we did not say die. And although there were some questionable decisions, like Siobhan McClanahan making attempting the shot, even though he does have a good resume for buzzer beaters, so let's not take that. Let's not hold that against Javon, okay? So, really, for Javon to make that shot, if he did make it, I wouldn't have been surprised because Javon McClanahan has proven in the last year or two that the buzzer is his friend, whether it, whether the shot counts or not. And I can't recall anybody in a UH uniform who made as many buzzer-beating threes as Javon McClanahan has in the last year or two. Going back to the Diamond Head Classic Championship against SMU. So quite frankly, when we won it all in 2016, we lost only three times. We finished 13 and three. We won every team and we won against every team in the Big West except Long Beach State. So it was back to the drawing board there. We lost the home matchup to them by about six, and we ended up losing the road matchup. And unfortunate and the only sucky part to that was the loss to Long Beach State prevented us from having a road sweep because we won every road game up until that point. And my dad was saying to me once that I'd rather lose that game than the Big West game, than the Big West tournament game. And uh, I don't know. I was on the opposite. I'm on the opposite end. I'd rather have two wins. I'm sure everybody would like to have, would like the team to win two times. You know, win all your road games and win the Big West tournament, which they ended up doing. And they ended up doing so in a route over UC Santa Barbara. Thanks to uh, Roderick Bobbitt free throws down the stretch. And uh, then we ended up going to the, to the tournament. Then Cal's, then we defeated Cal after their star player went down with an injury. And we ended up winning that. And unfortunately our road to glory ended against the Terrapins of Maryland. And unfortunately nobody could buy a shot other than, uh, other than uh, Mike Thomas. So, and unfortunately, after that, all the horses that we had accumulated at at that time ended up departing the University of Hawaii, which was extremely unfortunate. Not going to lie to you. I mean, anytime you lose a player, whether it's a walk-on or someone who put in a lot of key contributions to the season, regardless of how minuscule it may it may have turned out to be, that's kind of that's pretty much a loss. You know, it's pretty much a big loss. And that's why I have a love-hate relationship with the transfer portal. So, with the win over UC Riverside, we've swept every opponent all time in the Big West, especially UC San Diego, who were still transitioning to Division II, and they still can't go to the tournament. And this year is a little bit unfortunate because they're running second place right now, and their star player, Bryce Pope, has certainly saved their bacon more than once. And unfortunately, UH lost to them at their place in Lion Tree Arena this season on January 20th. Excuse me, I felt a burp come on. But still, 
that was a time where UH was really looking for answers then. And this, and as of late, UH has really shown me a lot. And hell, had we played this at hell, and we played like this at the start of the season, we would be making a play for first place in conference play in the conference standings. Not going to lie to you. When you see how good that they played, I mean, Davis was a temporary setback. I mean, that slow start really killed them, but they were able to come back to cut it to four points until Elijah Pepper ruined the rally with nine unanswered, all from him. And props to Pepper. I mean, I got nothing but respect for that guy. He's a he's been a great addition to the to the uh, Davis roster, especially with Ezra Manion transferring to uh, Vanderbilt. And it was those two guys that was their backcourt tandem. And T.Y. Johnson has kind of picked up his – and T.Y. Johnson has kind of carried the flag too. But anyway, back to UH. I'm very pleased that they were able to come through with this sweep because a sweep over UC Riverside was long overdue. And I remember asking Coach Gannat what, what had been going on there. Why couldn't you get a season sweep over them? And he didn't know either. And uh, my my philosophy is that how come we couldn't get that sweet bad luck? A mix of bad luck and not being able to finish out when they really should have. This time, this past season, was a case of finishing out and staying steady. Okay? So... Anyway, props to UH. Their final two games are this week on on Wednesday and Saturday. I'm going to make a separate prediction video for Bakersfield, and that's senior night. But CSUN, I feel confident enough to call UH as nine-point favorites because as of late, I think that UH has really shown me enough to where I can boldly predict nine-point favorites. Now, the last two times we've gone up against them at their place, it was the second matchup of the season. And we ended up winning convincingly thanks to an early second half run that turned out to be pretty long. It turned out to be a pretty big one. Last season, we locked it, or a couple seasons ago, we locked it up with a 26 to 5 run. And uh, last season, no different. We were able to uh, put the game away early in the second half. So, will we see the same thing this season? I don't know. I mean, the shoes are the shoes on the other foot here. We're competing at home for starters. And although we do have home court advantage, it's not going to be easy. But I still feel confident enough to put UH as nine-point favorites. I don't expect CSUN to come in and take this very lightly or go down very quietly either. Because they got guys like Deontay Bostic, Deshaun Allen Eikens. And uh, unfortunately, they lost the services of Fidelis Okereke. He was on CSUN last couple seasons he transferred to Bakersfield but still I feel confident enough to put UH as nine point favorites okay if UH can bring that momentum that they got from the win at Riverside we should be able to pocket this one and have another runaway game but we'll see what happens so anyway guys that's all for today and remember subscribe and I'll catch you all later See you for that game. You will see some shots from that game on Wednesday when I do go there. So thanks, guys. Remember, subscribe and and Bolama Pono, everyone.